What's up, everybody? Nick the Slick Johnson here with Jake Snyder. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said Janiac Snyder the Maniac <laughs> What's up everybody? Donning Vision here. Got uh, Nick Johnson. <laughs> What's up everybody? Nick the Slick Johnson here with Jake Snyder the Maniac Collider. Hello. Coming to you straight <laughs> from Donning Vision HQ. I'm keeping all those intros. Oh damn! I'm not. I'm not editing it, am I, for this one? Not this one. Nah, <laughs> you gotta cut some of it. But um, but yeah. So we are going to be doing commentary on our brand new film. Who are you? Yes, it's been a very successful release. I would say. Really happy with the reception we've gotten. Um, we've gotten some really great critical feedback and just reactions in general. Yes. So we yes. wanted to go through it, watch through it, just bring some insight to it and also address some uh, criticism that we got and how we interpreted that. Yes. And, and so on. Yes. So without further ado, Nick, you want to go ahead and start us off? Yes, indeed. And we'll be pausing uh, on and off through this. Oh, this sound effect was actually green screen, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, actually, a, a, a lot of people, um, or a good majority of people that I showed this to, um, it took them a while to catch on that this was an alarm sound yeah, effect. Same here. Yeah, so, and this was something that I realized we didn't show off in the beginning that I feel like we probably should have established earlier on that his phone is, his phone is just off screen right now, mm -hmm. but it's just something that we forgot to do. Here we go. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Mm, mm. I do want to pause it right here. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I had stabilized this shot because I, it was on a tripod, but it was at a strange angle. So I was holding the tripod. It's, it sounds really counterintuitive, counterproductive when I'm saying it out loud. So like there, there's a small uh, jiggle to the camera. Nice. And originally I, I stabilized it, but I looked, I colored it, and then I put it back into the premiere. And I, I kind of just liked how it looked with the, the small uh, jitter. Little shakes, little jitters. Yeah. So I, I just ended up keeping it. My toe was broken uh, when we filmed this. Not the one, not the pinky toe that you see, but the one on the opposite foot. Mm. Um, yeah, that happened yeah. like a, in November last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took months for it to heal back. And this this particular scene was filmed in January, so that was still fairly fresh, about yeah. a month and a half out. Yeah, that was hurting. And I didn't realize how flat my feet were until watching this film. And also, on a technical side of things, uh, we ended up re-recording all of the audio mm. for this entire short film. Uh, that was, I think, the literal last thing we did was the audio for this thing. And we, we had got, if you, if you had watched the uh, behind the scenes uh, making of, of this short film, mm -hmm. you would see us setting up the mic for every shot because we did, we set the mic up but when I went uh, into editing it at the, at the end, there was this uh, electrical interference that was constant through the entire, uh, the entire short film. And I was able to get rid of it, but too much of the natural sound was getting taken away with it. So I figured out what the interference was. It was having a, a battery in the shotgun mic 
as well as having um, my Zoom hand recorder powered as well. So I just took the battery out of the mic, put Phantom Power on, and the, the hum went away. So we just re-recorded the whole thing from there. Oh my, we also had like a bunch of different, okay, not not like a bunch, but we had like a lighting set up here where like- I was you, just gonna you, you say, set up the, yeah, yeah. The, the blue light. So yeah, it's not natural lighting. Like when you see the blue light, like cause we yeah. were trying to make it like, like give it like a morning feel. Okay, okay. You're, so you're talking about the whole room in general. Yeah, no, this was yeah. filmed in the afternoon mm -hmm. and this, <laughs> we, I had just gotten a uh, new lighting equipment um, over the holidays and I was really excited to finally get into like creative lighting So we lit up the whole room blue to simulate the morning light as Nick was saying, mm -hmm. but I also wanted to um, Mention we I put in some small LEDs in the closet um, You know just so you could see his face and way back when we filmed this uh, you'll notice that there's a shine on the inside of the closet door. Mm. And originally, I w the plan was to mask that out. But when the time came to mask that out, uh, I realized how, uh, how much work it would have been. <laughs> and so I said, fuck it, it's an Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was originally going to mask it out. And then out of nowhere, I just didn't, so you know. <laughs> oh, shit's crazy, guys. <laughs> St stuff happens, I guess. That's the magic of movies, dude. Yeah, it was cold in that room, man. Anyway, play. Yeah, play. Yeah, so that's my favorite breakfast. I eat that every morning. <laughs> I don't put water in it, I just microwave it dry. Mmm. Yeah. Nice. Golly. Ugh, yes. Uh, we got we got to tell the story <laughs> yeah. here, <laughs> bro. Okay. Yeah, this this was this is a this is okay. Go ahead. Th no, this this was like a weird shoot. We had taken we decided to take Friday off of work and and Monday off of work so we could just have extra time to film. And this was that Friday. We woke up at like Four. like four thirty or something yeah. in the morning. Drove over to Chandler. This was uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in. Matter of fact. And yeah, Jake had got like this. <laughs> I got he, I got he, a suction cup car rig. Yeah, yeah. And this this is my car, and we we had it on the uh, on the hood. And I I do want to say, but before you continue, the night before we because we got this car rig the day before we were going to shoot. And the night before, me and Nick drove to a, a random parking garage and we tried it out on an old Canon uh, Rebel camera I had mm. just to see how safe it was. And it was safe. It was so <laughs> it safe. Was, it was mad safe for, for, for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it was safe. And we, it's, it's Friday morning. It's probably like, well, like 6.37 or something oh, at, at this point in the day. I think 6.30. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh man, no coffee, no Red Bull, nothing. So we, we we're testing it out, and I'm I drove around the neighborhood like a bunch of times. Yeah, this this was one of the very first. Uh, this was the first setup we had. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was your third lap because e the first two laps I, I reviewed and I gave you more direction, and the third lap uh, was the final one. Yeah, and this I had put on. Uh, my 18 millimeter lens, my prime, which is one of my smaller lenses, very lightweight. Um, and I didn't have my battery grip on or anything. So it, it was a light setup and it worked really well, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. The no problem. problem. <laughs> Got a lot of weird looks while I was like driving around. I was like, oh, okay, guys. <laughs> Just trying to make a little film. Guys. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, like, come on, yo. The problem arose with the very next shot. Uh, we kept the car rig in the same spot on the hood, but I put on my 50 millimeter prime, which if any of you guys out there have the new Fujifilm 50 millimeter prime, 
you'll know how fucking heavy it is. It is a fucking monster. It was very front heavy for sure. But the 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 car rig said I think it supported up to eighteen pounds. It it, it had a very large like weight support capacity. That motherfucker must have been 19 or something, man. <laughs> so, golly. So, and and also to preface this, um, I, I, I wanted the shallow depth of field, so I, I had the f-stop at 1.0, um, so it was super bright. So I put on my ND filter to make it darker, and then I put on my polarizer to cut off the reflections from the windshield. So I had two layers of filters on it. And uh, we, we put it on, secured it. it. It seemed stable and off Nick went. And the, the, the three prior laps were maybe 10 minutes each, maybe not even that long. They were fairly short. Nick leaves and uh, he's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The, with... When we put that that final one on, I think we had talked about something like let's get more like reactions or something like that. So I had taken yeah, like an alternate route and it was like a longer route just so I right. could try to get like more footage. And also there I think there was like a car accident or something like that, like around this this area. So then I definitely had to take a detour. Mm -hmm. And like I noticed it the camera kept kind of like swaying from side to side, like the, the yeah, lens would kind of go the, like that. It started uh to like Turn yeah, off subject. Yes, yeah, so I was like, okay, so like I turn around and like I stopped in like a, a parking lot and I straightened it out and I kind of I checked to like make sure it was like fine, and it seemed fine. Like the little screw thing was fine. I was like, oh, okay. So I I start like driving and yeah, like I'm I'm getting like a little bit closer. I don't and I don't know if like maybe I just like stopped too hard or like if it was just like super loose, but it had like popped off weirdest thing like legit weirdest thing yeah. because you're you're describing this and the way you describe it because it was twisted on several times yeah onto this threaded you know screw uh, not a screw i don't know what the word is yeah. Well, yeah but it just plopped all the way off of the thread and it, you you want to describe it <laughs> Um, like just straight like panic and like fear kind of just filled my heart up. Like I, I might as well have just like hit somebody, bro. I was like, oh my gosh, like I don't know. So yeah, like it had popped off and I, I ran out of the car, like I picked it up and I, I kind of checked. And the, you were going 45, you were going the speed limit Yeah. and it, it fell straight on the asphalt. It did yeah. and the the lens was cracked the lens was cracked and like the battery had fallen out. The camera mm -hmm. itself, if I remember correctly, was like basically fine. Yeah. It was just those two things. So we didn't get the footage, which was a little bit frustrating. That that was probably the most heartbreaking mm -hmm. of the whole situation because the shot looked so good. It 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 was kind of like this current shot, but it was a little bit more angled. Mm -hmm. So it, it had like the, the rule of thirds going. Nick was more towards the left of the screen. You see more of the passing scenery. Um, but it, it had such a good view of his face. And I was so happy with it. But my guess is when the battery popped out, the footage was not able to save. So it just wasn't there. And yeah, Nick drove back. Uh, and I think it had been 20 minutes, maybe close to half an hour probably just 20 minutes though at this point it felt like the longest time it, <laughs> I gotta yeah I, I was getting nervous at this point i had i, I was just sitting in the cold because it was <laughs> it was april but damn it was early and it was cold uh and i was just watching spongebob on my phone because someone had uploaded the whole episode of twitter so i was like cool um he drives back he pulls up and I could see through the windshield just this like devastation on his face. And I made eye contact with him and he just looked at me and he closed his eyes. <laughs> uh, so I went over, he opened the door and he handed it to me. And yeah, the entire front of the lens was smashed and it's a $1,500 lens. So I, I was not happy, <laughs> but, but going back to, uh, how heavy this lens was 
I, I'm looking at it and uh, I think, wait a minute. And so I start unscrewing the two layers of filters I had on it and they, the, the metal was dented so it was hard to unscrew. But once I got it off, I realized the lens was fine. There was no cracks on the lens. The, the filters had taken all of the damage. So I, my, my guess is that because the, the camera was so front heavy because of this lens, it landed straight face down on the asphalt and the, the, the lens and the camera body itself was fine. So I ended up uh, just replacing the, the filters and we kept going. Uh, it, it's a shame we lost that shot, but we, we kept the most important equipment and we just kept going. And we, this was a, a really, really busy four day shoot. So we were lucky uh, we didn't get out of commission uh, <laughs> that soon. <laughs> On the first day. On the first shoot, <laughs> yeah. So let's continue. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't acting in this scene, y'all. I was tired as heck. <laughs> Don't look at my socks, by the way. Yeah, two mismatched Th socks. This was, yeah. But yeah, that was, in, that was the parking lot of the apartment complex that I lived in in junior high and high school. So it was kind of, mm. it was nostalgic to be back there. Mm -hmm. And this song coming up in, the, in this montage, uh, it was kind of difficult to find a, a, an appropriate song for this. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the very last things I did in the editing process um, because uh, I, I wanted to cut the montage to uh, whatever song I ended up choosing. So I kind of left this montage sit as it was for basically the entire editing process. So I, I had no idea how it was going to come out and how it was going to be ordered for the longest time. And I, I, one of the first songs I tried was this like Spanish guitar uh, song that I found off of Epidemic Sound, I believe. Mm. And it was, it, it was different. Like it worked on its own, but it didn't have the right tone. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yeah, it, Nick vetoed that one, and I think that was for the better. Um, and I ended up settling on this song by Se Seppuku Paradigm, I believe. Her, uh, her Witness, His Witness, it, it's something like that. Uh, and it's the end credit theme to that French movie Martyrs, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And it just... I, I, sh I remember listening to it and a lot of the lyrics stood out to me as things that we were going for. And I, I played it for Nick as soon as I found it and he dug it mm -hmm. and I put it in and it just fit. I was really happy with it. Mm. Did a lot of squats that day for, for that shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. There was no tender age. Fun fact. Um, yeah, like how I just unbuttoned that top button. Yeah. <laughs> the, the entire film, not once is that button actually buttoned. Like we just, we needed that for, for the shot. Yeah. You know? For aesthetic um, reasons. Yeah. And like out of all the criticisms that we've gotten, which to be fair, wasn't really like a lot. No one ever like brought that up. No one ever brought up the button. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, you know, I, I was I was proud of that. I was very impressed because I directed Nick to only use one hand to unbutton that top button because uh, two hands kind of busied up the frame mm -hmm. because of how close up it was. Yeah. And it, I think that was the third, maybe fourth try. Yeah, I had never unbuttoned a shirt with one hand before. So just like mentally and emotionally, this was like the 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 toughest thing to shoot. Mm. Like yeah, Nick was I, drained after that shot. Yeah, I, I had to do some serious method acting for mm -hmm. that, you know, but wasn't the same, but I think his sacrifice really paid off. Yeah, I haven't slept like since this uh this shot. But it was worth it because for the final product, it's like, oh, yes, 
Yes. Because it brings it all together. Yeah. You know what I mean? The film is better for it. Let's let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hello. Yeah, my uh, my my plan. <laughs> No, because I I um I watched this with my family recently, and my brother Brian brought up like an interesting point. Like for a split second, when he lays the mat down, my uh my leg is blocking the O, so it looks like it's the word hell. And my <laughs> my brother Brian was like, "Yeah, was this supposed to like re represent that?" It was like, "Uh, y yeah, 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 yeah." I really wish we had noticed that because that is so cool. Yeah, it's uh, like, yeah. I, we really could have played into that, but damn. We did not notice that. We didn't. Yeah, it was just like like the, we we, we the, got it because it looked kind of like it simple looked, and plain. Like it looked the, like, like the, the you poster. got this poster. Yeah, it, that's so. the only reason. <laughs> For real, it was like like and I know like when I broke that down like to my family, they were like it looked like the that that black and white word document y'all printed out. That you got this poster. That that's another thing I actually wanted to address because in hindsight, it really does look like we just printed out. You got this on a plain piece of paper. Edit this part out. <laughs> Don't tell him. You can't tell him. <laughs> no, no. Like, no we, paid, we, we paid like $85 <laughs> no, we, for, for that poster. We, we, we bought paid, two of them. We paid actual money for two of these posters. They came. They were tiny. And yeah. they were really l lame looking. But we were like, okay, that kind of fits with the aesthetic <laughs> that this yeah, dude did. lives in so we're rolling with it yeah like it's, it's boring and it's lame it's black and white like his it's as not you, even as you framed see, it's not even a frame he just threw it on the wall yeah and like like i said it's black and white his whole thing is is black and yeah, white. that's the yeah. wardrobe but that's kind of like you know towards the end of the movie like it's it's filmed in black exactly and white. so thematically um it's it all works. tied together it was it was all deliberate and everything we did in this film was it was deliberate purpose. it deliberately looked cheap but i just want to say we we didn't just print it out. Yeah. <laughs> this was this was that same day as uh yeah, yeah, as yeah. The drive. This was also in Chandler, Arizona. Yeah, this was just like a mile or two away from where we shot the driving uh scene. Mm -hmm. And this was I think 10 or 11 in the morning and we were beat or at least I was beat and it was getting really hot now. I was exhausted. Um I was in those sweats. It was hot outside. I don't even I don't even think like we ate until like a, until we had finished. Yeah, we didn't have breakfast until we finished shooting, um, which I think was immediately after this. These walking scenes. Dude, it we, was man, it, it was hot as Lucifer's living room out there, man. You're telling me. And like the. Yeah, like, oh, look at him. Oh, that's <laughs> gross. Like I purposely like kind of kept my hair like unkempt more so than I typically do yeah, just to like add like to the whole few four months bro for f the entire time and like it was I was getting kind of like dang because I was like I really want a haircut but like we're we've only filmed like like 15 20 percent of the of the of the film or whatever it was a long shoot it uh, only filming on weekends is rough but it was man I, I felt mean, like I was turning into this this character bro I like, mean, oh, look at him. Oh, my gosh. Let's talk about that afterwards, because actually, we I have a lot to say yeah. about that, too. Oh, just real quick, because going back to the whole, like, Brian thought it said hell. Shout out to my little brother, Brian. Like, next time we write a film, man, you got to you gotta, you gotta be in the writer's room with us. Hell, yeah. Oh, yes. Even his quote was black and white. My grandmama bought me that quote when uh, I went to college. <laughs> Special heirloom. Hello. Yep, this is Challen. And it was actually six o'clock in the morning. Like we had timed it perfectly. This was Chandler. Mm. Mm. This was the hardest day, like real time. Cause yeah. I, I could, like, yeah, because I'm dusting my feet off of Jake's, like, yeah, like, do, do something different. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, man, what yeah, else can I do? I was like, like scraping him like, to the side, <laughs> diagonal. I was doing like circles and it, triangles. And this and is shit. something that only Nick knew at the moment because, like, I'm just looking at the camera and I'm like, damn, him just coming up and wiping shoes normally. It looks so lame. It, it it's not getting it's not exaggerated enough. 
So I'm telling him like, hey, can you like mix it up? Because I think we had done three takes at this point or something. And I was like, D can you please do something different? Bro, like, yo, I hear you, man, but you, you, you're not getting it. I felt like Tyrese, man. Uh, <laughs> like, like, yeah, do like do more do you want yeah, bro, from he's me? Like, do, do something different. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> what more do you want from me? Oh, uh, but bro. he did it. He pulled it off. And, I, and then I didn't we just went with the first take. <laughs> nah. Uh, I didn't realize till afterwards that Nick was having such a hard time. Yeah, I was like, how do, how the fuck else I'm supposed to uh, dust my feet off on this, like, Mac? So I'm going through, like, 24 years of memories. I'm like, I've only ever seen it done one way. <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, I, I've only seen three of these, you know, doormats in my life. Mm -hmm. It was insane. But we did it. You got this. Oh. This is one of my favorite shots. I don't think it's one of our stronger shots, but I just really like it's a good shot. what it communicates. Bro, like, like this, this could be a painting right here. You feel me? Like this, this could low key be promotional art for the film. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it speaks to what he's going through. Like you have this, you know, it's it's supposed to be a motivational phrase, yeah. but it's presented in such a shitty way and it's not working for him he's like rubbing his eyes and shit like that yeah. look at that back action look at that cobra back action man you know it look like arnold schwarzenegger right there man if Got i me. were to redo the shot because i really like everything except for those two the light switch and the plug and the 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 roof corner and the the crease the of the room yeah, yeah, yeah. if i could just re-angle the camera so it's just Nick and this poster and this like blank background. I think it would be so much stronger. But I, I think in the moment when we were filming this, I, I wasn't realizing how much I was going to like this shot and how much potential there would have been otherwise. Mm. But I do, I really like this shot a lot. This was also interesting because, yeah, yeah, you think it's just like, like, okay, and and you're eating the oatmeal, the cow is behind you, so you know, you don't realize, I guess, how little you move when you like eat something, like, because Jake was like, like, you know, you're not really doing yeah, too much, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. need, we need, you need to um, exaggerate the movements a lot more. So yeah. I was having to move my arm all the way up and move my head all the way down so you could mm -hmm. uh, get the sense, okay, he's eating in his in his wrinkled shirt. But it's wrinkled because he just, he doesn't care about nothing no more. So he's, yeah. he's making, he's not making as much of an uh, attempt to present himself well. Honestly, why why sure. would you if life is meaningless, you feel me? Um, yeah, the first take we did, uh, I, I said action and Nick started going and I was watching the camera and I'm like, is he going? <laughs> like there, like he said, there is so little movement. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, we need a, we need a plan B. We need a new plan of action here. Yeah, this was a hundred takes. <laughs> One of my favorite shots. That's a great shot. That's a poster right there. Yeah, I like this shot a lot. We also had like the lighting to it. I think it was either like blue or like purple lighting or something like that, like from the it side. It was blue, yeah. We had blue on the on the rim of Nick. Uh, and honestly, that shot, it, the only reason it looks so good, or it looks as good, is because um, the color grade, I did a couple masks because uh, we were filming that in the middle of the day and we had tried to block out our windows behind Nick, mm -hmm. but... Um, uh, it was still seeping through, um, so I was able to thankfully in post block out all the stuff behind him, so it just looks like he's in like a void. Mm. But yeah, it came out great. That was scary. That was a little spooky. I really like that shot mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. Uh, because, like, it was kind of impromptu. We didn't know we were going to film that shot that day. Um, 
because that, we had filmed that shot immediately after we filmed the desert sequence at the very end. Mm -hmm. And we were out and about and we had the car rig with us. So we figured let's just get this one shot that we forgot to get. Um, and uh, by this time I had broken my 18 millimeter. So we, and I didn't want to use my 50 millimeter again in case it fell off the, the, the car rig again. So I, I had to use my 35 millimeter, uh, which was my last lens at the time. And that has no image stabilization on it. And so you can see the, it, it's really, there's a lot of vibration in that shot. And I, it, that wasn't intentional, but when I, I played it back, I actually really liked that feeling it got, it gave off, like this kind of unsettling uh, feeling. Mm. So I decided to play into that. So when Nick comes into frame, I, uh, I put, I amped up the, the vibration with um, some effects and after effects and also put a lot more motion blur on it so it looked more natural. And I, I just really like how it all came together at the end. I do want to say that that hello shot just now. Um, I, I, I've struggled when I was editing it. I was struggling with uh, the, the, the length of that cut because it, it holds for a long time. And like the, the YouTube editor in me really wanted to cut it shorter by like a second or so. Mm. But um, I, I kept reasoning with myself thinking, no, I, I want them, I want the audience to like basically understand that this shouldn't be there, that yeah. it's holding on this shot because something is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but man, it, it still stands out to me even now. Oh, well, our first tripod uh, Easter egg right in the reflection of the handle. Ooh. Oh shit! <laughs> there, there, there's a wow. couple of tripods in this. No, that's the only one. That's the only one. Uh, there. No, that, that's the only one. That's the only one. I I know all of them, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I could not be fucked to try and get rid of it. Uh, I I like the shot, and we went with it. Oh yeah, this shot, we, cause we wanted to make it just one continuous shot. So the first few times, you know, we just had it where the camera's on the tripod and it turns and you see me in the door, but I run underneath <laughs> yeah. the the tripod and I make it in the in the seat. And like, I, we, we were getting it. The only problem is we have mirrors on our wall. Um, mm -hmm. And so you always see me running uh, <laughs> you already see my reflection running in the mirror and it was like, you know what? Yeah, we're just gonna have to make it two different takes. Yeah. One yeah. of me just, oh, j just, just me walking in and then it turns and then another one where like, it's like midway through the turn and then I'm sitting, I'm sitting down there. Mm -hmm. And what Jake did was he kind of like composited the two mm -hmm. so that when it moves to the side, like he just, he just matched it and was like Adobe Premiere, I think, right? Yeah. So it, it gives the illusion like, oh, it's just one continuous. I'm and shot. honestly, that shot went through so many editing iterations because uh, the, just it, I kept running into problems, um, timing problems. Like a big one was uh, I, I don't have a, a smooth, a smooth turning tripod, or at least not a good one. Yeah, not smooth enough. And also, I didn't. I. I ended up turning them at slightly different speeds. So even though I might match one frame to uh, of one clip and match it to the other clip perfectly, it'll still play out at different speeds. So I had to adjust the speeds of both of them, play them out in slow motion, see where they match, see where they don't, uh, fix the speeds of that. And then I had to uh, fix the color uh, of, of both clips because 
when Nick walks through the door, he's uh, his color is orange, or you know, it, it's the afternoon, mm -hmm. so it's it's uh, yeah, it's the orange color. But when the camera turns and it's the new cycle, it's morning, so it's the blue color. So I, I had to do uh, several different colors for each each shot, and even when I had that done, it still <laughs> it looked wrong. And uh, I we realized in editing that Nick opening the door, his, his sleeves were rolled down and his shirt was untucked, and it's it's even unbuttoned by the collar. It's different, so I had to punch in a lot. And I only started zooming out as the camera started to turn. So that that shot, that whole scene right there, not scene, but it, it, it's really a Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, that yeah. sequence. That sequence. Also, that, that was your voice, wasn't it? A, a majority sound? of these sound effects are just me. Uh, I, I got when I was doing the audio design for this, I, I got really inspired. Uh, just just a random thought. When we were filming this, this was not my intention. I was not filming this with sound effects in mind. Uh, but when I was just looking through, I thought, hey, this would be cool. So I went into the laundry room with, with the mic and just recorded a bunch of different uh, sounds of, of me like going right, right into the microphone. What made you uh, choose those sounds? You said you were inspired. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't think it was I, I might be mistaken but i don't remember any one inspiration i honestly think it was just an intrusive thought hmm. because i i was watching it play out and just a sound came into my head and i was like i can do that and and, and i did <laughs> just <laughs> exhaling into the mic yeah just a bunch of different ways so what's happening right now is when he came in and he saw the dude sitting there, at first he was like, yo, what's going on? But the dude sitting there turned around and they saw each other, they made eye contact. So what we were trying to uh, convey was they make eye contact and then they don't switch places. It's just like he kind of, he'll turn into the one that he's looking at. He jumped to the new cycle. To, to a different point in the cycle. And the cycle, yeah, that's what this whole film is about. He's stuck in a cycle that he just doesn't want to be in. He's living a life that he's um, extremely unsatisfied with. So it's yeah. like it's he, he subconsciously is trying to break through that cycle and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, get, get a different life, basically. So that's what when he when he like he he's looking and like he kind of like looks at his shirt and is like, what's going on? Like, because this is the first time he's done this. Like, why is my shirt different? My hair might be like a little bit different. I'm eating this delicious oatmeal right now. And th this is actually one uh, really good feedback uh, criticism that we received. Um, and it, 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 it's kind of a double-sided, double-bladed, double-edged sword, double-edged blade, whatever, because we didn't show the eye contact. Uh, I, I, it, it, we never really put emphasis uh, on the eye contact, at least visually in this whole thing. And I do think that was a mistake on our part. Yeah, like it's at, at the best, it's just implied. It is just implied, and honestly, I think it's just an oversight. We we've just forgot to incorporate. Um, however, uh, the 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 double edged blade that I was talking about here, we didn't show the switch in this in this first interaction in this first jump, uh, and I, I can see a lot of people becoming confused because of that. However, I kind of wouldn't change that because it, it kind of it it's creating that intrigue that that what's going on now it's yeah like, okay something weird is happening yeah because also another thing that we we're trying to do with with this one was we didn't want to necessarily just like outright say what's going on we wanted yeah. it to be one of those films where like you watch it and it's like oh okay i wonder what this man like you kind of like you know, try to put it together on mm -hmm. your own, like think for yourself and stuff like that. Wanted to leave it like a little bit ambiguous, but and, and still kind of get our message across. And as the film goes on, we, we do start showing, with each new jump, we show more and more of what happens. Um, uh, we'll, you'll see in the next one, but in the next jump, 
you see his legs disappear. And then in the third jump, you, you actually see his whole body disappear. So, um, yeah, let's continue. That was, that's for the film. Yeah, like how messy, this is specifically for the film, y'all, because I know my mom's going to be watching this. You but can actually see the behind the scenes of us making this dirty. Like, yeah, this is we, actually. We, we spent a long time on this, bro. Got the oatmeal by the sink. <laughs> Wait, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I, Why I did never it? noticed that. That's oh, crazy. That's I, funny. I just now saw that, man. That's, that's insane. funny. Okay. <laughs> I always feel goofy with, with that run, like. Oh, that's me as well. Yeah. Oh, I, I love this whole shot. It's so cool to me. This, I like this shot. You know, yeah, like the, the, the multiple the, reflections. This shot, just it just kind of came out of the blue. Um, it wasn't planned, but originally, it was just him looking into the flat mirror, and we, we thought, like, it, it, it's just kind of visually playing. So yeah, it literally, it we just tilted the two closest to the camera, and and again, this works thematically because there's, there's multiple two of them. hymns. He's trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot. Oh, that's that's a really cool shot. I really really like this shot, but one thing that did kind of make me sad. Um, I'm not like I'm not. A master at coloring like at all I'm still I feel like I'm just past amateur maybe but I, I it kind of made me a little sad because I, I had to keep to the uh, the color of all the scenes before so you know uh, it all matched but I, I really the, I had done some experiments with that one shot and like made the color really dramatic looking and it looked so much cooler but I, I had to hold back to keep the continuity the color continuity uh the same but i, I still like that shot a lot oh tripod number two <laughs> you know i can't even see it. it it shows up more on certain screens on the stairs for those who can't see it. <laughs> oh, here's when we broke the 18 millimeter. This was like, I think the last shot I filmed with it for this entire short film. Okay. Uh, it, I forgot to tighten. And it's weird because the 18 millimeter is so light but I forgot to tighten the tripod, uh, one, of the, one of the things on the tripod and the camera just boop, fell right off, snapped off the, the plate and the, the 18 millimeter snapped in half. This whole scene right here actually was uh, a scrapped scene idea that we were going for. This was during the four day uh, we four day shoot um, that me and Nick did, and this is immediately after I broke the eighteen millimeter. So I'm angry. I'm outside. <laughs> uh, I think it, there was something like it was hot, or there are bugs on me because of all the lights. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was in a really bad mood and I was, the, the, the scrapped shots that we were going for uh, involved Nick hearing something behind him and the, the focus uh, shifting, the focus racking to the stairs. Um, but for the life of me, I could not focus rack uh, correctly, f quick enough to the stairs. So I ended up keeping this shot just cutting before I attempted any focus pulling and we ended up just doing this next shot instead this one that one hair above the mustache <laughs> that's sticking out this was tough to shoot too it just felt very awkward like physically 
That was one of my favorite shoots, though, because it, on my end, it was going like super smooth. Like I, the shots were coming together. Um, <laughs> you, you were just running into some acting difficulties, I guess. Yeah, because it's like because part of it was I had to pull it hard enough so that all the knives would shift for it, but not too hard. <laughs> yeah, so it's like uh, I was like, yeah. this, it's an either or kind of thing for me, man. <laughs> So yeah, I had to angle the the knife right so it would it would catch the light. That's right, that's right. And uh, originally we were we had done a couple of takes and we didn't realize um, you, you were just wearing socks. You didn't have your the shoes on uh, and the <laughs> your feet were in in shot. Albeit they were out of focus, but thankfully we did catch that one. Out of all the things that we missed, we at least caught that. I got the gray socks on right there, not the black ones. Yeah. Mm. Just contemplating life. Mm -hmm. See how how the U was was severed. It was it was disconnected. Who are you? This film was tricky. I had to run so fast away from the camera that it looked like I just vanished. So I had to you know I had to train for that. It was tough. Broke my other toe. Mm. Um, but you know it, it looked good. It looked good. So you know. We did. Really we good. did chip the the tip of that uh, of that knife though, because we had dropped it so many times. I love that knife drop. The way it kind of just it falls directly on mm -hmm. the tip, and yeah. The, thankfully, we didn't. We weren't even using that knife. We have like thirty knives in this house. Yeah, so, just in case. Yeah, just in case we run out. Um, but that knife, <laughs> it, it's all the way fucked right now. Yeah. Actually, that, that paper folding sound effect is, I think, one of only two original sound effects. Um, I, I just loved how crisp it was. I, I, I couldn't get rid of it. That was some thick paper. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to tell the story the, of this door closing. The, this, this shot was dope because um, <laughs> our, friend, our friend Addison was over. We just had him in a, a green like morph suit. So he was pulling morph the door closed. Wasn't that what it's called? Like the, where it like, goes over like the whole body? I don't know. It well, sounds he, funny. Yeah, he was he he was he was in one of those suits, and we just he closed the door. And we just green screened him out. Easy money. That's actually a lie. We don't <laughs> actually have a friend called Addison. Um, it was me. That's right. That's right. My <laughs> no. bad. Okay, so y'all yeah, don't know this. His middle name is Addison, so that's where the confusion. What, okay. what really happened was um, this was I think. The only practical effect we have in the film, yeah. Unless I'm mistaken, I think this is. Bro, yeah. And um, we had some. It was a. It was dental floss. Uh, originally, yes, it was. We we were thinking of how to do this, and uh, we, we originally were like, okay, we, we probably need to go buy some fishing wire, some fishing line wire, and then uh, I don't know if it was me or you. It may have been you. Um, said like, hey. We have floss, right? And I was like, dude, that's genius. That sounds and, like something I would say. And we, we did it. We tied it uh, uh, on the doorknob. And I, I had this like yard of uh, floss in my hand. And I was standing out of sight in my room. And I would yell, action, wait a minute. And I would just pull it as hard as I can. And I think the first time we did it, it worked. But it wasn't on camera we were just testing it and the next time we tried it on camera uh <laughs> the the floss snapped at like the last moment and it's actually like a really funny clip that we have because <laughs> you can hear me go like ah <laughs> <laughs> um but then we we retied it we like quadruple knotted that bitch and it just <laughs> kept fucking snapping. No, nah, you a fool for that one. Bro. It, it like mm -hmm. it kept snapping at different places too. And we we just ran out of floss. 
<laughs> we, we, we went through a whole thing of floss on this one, uh, on this one shot. And we, we were standing there just trying to figure out what to do. We had like a, a, a mile of floss on the floor. Mm. Um, and then we, uh, thankfully, just uh, we were looking in our supply closet and we found some zip ties. And we, because the, right. the door is so out of focus, um, the, even though the zip ties are much thicker, you still couldn't see it wrapped around the, uh, around the doorknob. So we just uh, fashioned uh, a little loop of zip ties. I think it was like five or six zip ties and it worked out great. I really like this shot. I feel like I look like a dad right there. <laughs> I know y'all ain't in that toilet. Y'all better not be in that toilet down there. Mm, the piano note, man. Yeah. Sheesh. Hey. That is awful acting. <laughs> but that was a cool visual effect, though. You know? Mm. It's, it's very, the visual effect of him disappearing, of you disappearing, is very simple and it's very, anyone can do it if you know how to edit, but it gets the job done mm -hmm. and it gets the film out the door. So, yeah, and, and you know, it's it, free it, it because worked. I'm doing it. Yeah, and it, it didn't need to be anything like super flashy or anything yeah. like it, that. Like the point isn't the effect. It's just yeah. like what's happening. Yeah. It's like, um, oh, this man disappeared. Yeah. It, it's what we got. So we did it. Well, that's scary right there, man. I will say right here, I actually did contemplate for a while um, on whether or not to include the, the sound effects of the cycle changing because he does cross over to a new cycle here but this is the only time I don't have the sound effects in. And I, I wanted to keep the continuity, but I also, I, I valued the eerie silence more than the continuity. So I kind of broke that rule here. Mm. And it's a big beard. No, I was just blurred out. One note here, a re uh, one of the ideas uh, I had for this scene um, was, you know, we had the black and white, we had the grain, or we had super grain. The whole film has grain, but this one I really punched it up to make it really noticeable. Um, so one of the ideas I was toying with was uh, making the, 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 all of the audio sound like an old microphone, um, but in practice, it, it was really distracting. Um, some people are distracted by the black and white itself. Uh, I like it, I, I don't find that distracting, but I feel like the microphone really pushed it over the edge. So the compromise I ended up going with was I, I put that old microphones effect on just the music. So the music sounds very muted here. You know, that's probably hard to tell, but like for this shot right there, or with like my beard, we were trying to make him look even more unkempt than he had. Yeah, so that's right. You we were spent like, like, it like up. the long time, yeah, <laughs> like just brushing it the wrong way, and yeah. you know, it just looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't even tell. It still just look. It still looks fucked up. Mm. But you know, it's it, it's emphasized now because he's got like the the pill bottle and the. Mm -hmm. the the alcohol bottle and we bought that specifically for this movie because this is a, a dry household we don't drink here uh, except like water and sodas occasionally but you know yeah we were trying to show like the reason it's black or white and it's like extra grainy is like this was the version of him that had just been through like the absolute worst this is his lowest point and he says mm -hmm. he has that line don't look at me he says that because 
he presumably has like lived through the other cycles. So he's like, if you look at me, you're going to become me and you're going to go through all this shit too. So yeah, I don't want that for you. And you know, and you know, yeah. If you look at me, there will be no chance of escaping because this is the bottom. Mm-hmm. There is no way out from this. Yeah, this is it, bro. This whole black and white scene is my favorite, visually at least. Um, I love how it all came together with the lights and especially this this upcoming scene where the door opens. Oh, that's a great shot, right? I there. love this shot where the light starts too and it kind of divides his face. This shot, I love how this came out. This, this shot was kind of funny because I, I think we did this after work on a weekday yeah, oh, we did. Because yeah. We had the, the fog machine, our Halloween fog machine going, and this place was... It looked like we was hotboxing up in this motherfucker. It was man. insane. It was, and it it's was funny because thick. you can only barely see it yeah, in, we, in the video, but it, it, <laughs> all our neighbors were out, too. Yeah, we, we were like inhaling open. it. We were like coughing and stuff, man. Yeah, it was bad, but the, the shots looked great. I was tired as hell from this part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's making that choice like, yeah, I don't want to be this guy. Yeah. He said, I don't know you. And he just left him there. Mm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this was a... I, was this the end of the four days that we took off? This was that Monday. Bro. Yeah. This was the most exhausted I think I'd ever been. It was hot as shit out there. Oh, my God. Had that thick-ass jacket, those yeah. black pants. Bro, I, l- listen, man. Nick I was, was a trooper on this one, for sure. <laughs> man, I couldn't see for like two days after this, man. It was bad. And I, I'm bald. I got a sunburn on top of my head. <laughs> It, it was, it, we were only out there for like a half hour, maybe. I was smelling bacon, bro. Like it something was, was like bubbling. I was like, <laughs> hey man, you eating bacon? <laughs> yeah, the, we were, I don't think either of us were in like crazy high spirits because we were so exhausted. Um, I think this was the fourth, this was the fourth consecutive day of filming. The bro. three days prior, <laughs> it was like 12 hour days. Yeah, man, like we, Oh, we man. were getting the most. We were, but you know, like it was all worth it, though. Oh yeah, I it really like how it. the how this desert scene came out. Yeah. I uh, would do it again. I would do it again too. And honestly, if uh, we were able to do it again, I would have shot more at this desert because I, I kind of would have liked the more cuts interspersed, so it was like a little bit more uh, unhinged, mm. just a little bit more crazy. Yeah. Um, a little bit more confused, but I still like what we got. I, yeah. Yeah, I was just spinning around in circles, man, like feeling dumb. <laughs> uh, I was like, I don't know how many more times I can do this. <laughs> Trying to act confused, like. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this desert represents um, a new beginning because, you know, the desert's barren. So it's like, oh, some filthy glasses, man. But, you know, it, it was for the character. It fits the character. It was all for the character. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of people think that he is dead at the end of this short film. And I understand why. And I, I don't want to... I'm not, like rejecting that theory because I, I do like a lot of the interpretations but it's just it's not what we initially intended yeah you, uh, you know what he what you i feel like you could look at it like this he was dead version the, of himself was dead or like he was dead at the beginning he was dead on the inside mm. and it's like i i gotta get out of here man so then that's when he starts to just move through the cycle and try to form formulate a new life for himself yeah but yeah so our original idea writing this ending was um, him leaving, him going into the light is, yes, breaking the cycle. And our idea of him just winding up in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, is um, a metaphor for leaving a routine, leaving something you know, something that's comfortable, but something that you dislike, and finding yourself in a new environment confused you don't know where you are you don't know where to go but 
you are happy because you're out of what's been keeping you down. Yeah. There, there's so many possibilities now. It's a new beginning. It's a bit. It's a new beginning. Uh, it's a, a renaissance, basically. Mm. Look at all those dead pixels, just right on my face, and in my hair. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I actually farted like right when I closed. That's why I closed my eyes. I was like so relaxed, like, oh, it's the last day of filming, and my character made it out. <laughs> oh, that was that was a solid like, shoot, like forty five second just ripper it was, man. And yeah, that was our short film. We started in January of 2022, and it released June 3rd. Um, yeah, we we really put our foot in this one. Th this was, I think, the most ambitious project we'd ever worked on. Without a doubt. And this is one of the first, if not, no, this is one of the first where there is no punchline. It's not, you know, a joke. It's not a, a comedy skit. We actually wanted to say something here and we wanted to show what we can do or see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And it has, it, you know, it's flawed, but uh, we're just going to take those, acknowledge those flaws and try to keep them in mind for our next project, which is in the pipeline starting very soon. It's not gonna be another short film of this scale because um, we we do wanna put out more than two videos a year. Um, <laughs> Bro, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, because if it was another one of these, it would be out in December. Um, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, right? Maybe, bro. Uh, so we, we do have some, I, I, I don't wanna call them smaller, but less, smaller in scope, I guess. Yeah. Like we, we want the quality to still be there. Mm -hmm. um, and this next one is more, more comedic, but not just a comedy. I, I feel like it's more in, in line with this, just kind of toning down the horror aspect. Yeah, it's, it's a little lighter. I don't even really totally think this is horror. It's got some scary m tones to it. Yeah, this um, is more like a psychological maybe surreal kind of thing um yeah and the the this next one is introspective if you will yeah exactly and this next one is just kind of surreal comedy maybe i don't know well yeah it, it, you'll see you'll, you'll see. see you'll see we will be we'll have uh, some video on our new production starting soon Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, I'm really happy with this. Low key based on a true story for like both of us. That's, that's right. Yeah. Cause yeah. when the way yeah, yeah, this, yeah. yeah, the way this one started, um, cause we had just finished a previous video and we were trying to think of like the next thing Jake had come to me like, yo, I have this idea. What if it's this guy and he's living like a lonely life, he's in solitude, but he has this routine that he never breaks and doesn't mm -hmm. really have a reason to, you know, like he is it's just him. So there's no reason why it would break. And then right. one day something in his routine is off and he knows that it wasn't him, which that would beg the question, who set this thing out of place or whatever. And then, mm -hmm. you know, from there, we just kind of started like spitballing, you know, it was like, what if like, it's the thing is is out of place and he walks in and it's it's him it's like okay well if it's mm -hmm. if he sees himself like what would that represent and then we just formulated the story you know kind of like okay and this it this, this and that so happened naturally and then yeah i think when when we were filming it it was like oh this is us because yeah. we we were kind of we were in jobs that like yeah they're straight but they <laughs> we were weren't both really... very unhappy with our employment yeah, it was it was just like this. This isn't really where I want to be right now, mm -hmm. in terms of like my life or my well, mostly just career because I like my life. It was just the job wasn't really doing it for me like that. When the job started to become like all encompassing, it felt like at least for me and my experience, it, it just felt all consuming. And when we were when we were coming up with this idea, uh, <laughs> me and Nick just so naturally we're spitballing off of each other it's, for this <laughs> it, it, and I, we didn't realize it at the time 
like why we, it, it was coming so naturally to both of us. But I think we wrote our outline in 30 minutes, like, and it was a fleshed out outline. It's like, it, it's as if Jake was like, yo, I have this idea for, for a film. And then we both just made eye contact and both were saying the same exact things, like <laughs> verbatim at the same time, like not blinking for 30 minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and, and then we filmed it <laughs> like we we just knew like like man because yeah it just like you said it just it came together like so quickly so naturally mm -hmm. it was easy to, it was easy to to flesh out and like yeah man yeah 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 that job was trash this might have been i think the longest production we've ever had too easily the longest uh the the video before this that was uh the longest was three months i think yeah and i th the reason that one took so long was we just had different work schedules that's like, right I, I think you had the typical like monday through friday schedule yes yes my schedule because i had it and i had another different job it was like you work monday and tuesday and then you're off wednesday and thursday and then you work friday saturday sunday and then after that you're off monday and tuesday and then you only work wednesday and thursday and then you're off friday saturday sunday. so it was just kind of like we had to keep that in mind. Yeah, so we were basically filming every other week for that video. Um, and yeah, that shows because that video took three months uh, and it's only four minutes. And this this one took four months. One, two, three, four months. Yeah, five months. And it's over twice as long. I think it's two and a half times longer than that other one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I, I do like that video a lot. Uh, it's. Uh, we're referring to the um what is it even called what are you watching is that what it's called yeah what are you watching um the, the cheetah e girls video e even even with that one like we went all out bro like we were trying to figure out what's the mm. right what's the right title because like we want to obviously it has to tie into what's going on but we don't want to give it away and we also had to keep in mind the whole like seo aspect of it, the whole search yeah, engine optimization because yeah. you know we're trying to we're trying to be more serious more mature about what we um what we put out there so yeah like, yeah just the title took like the title was, well, like like weeks or something like that at least uh, like two it, or something yeah man. the title was rough and honestly i i loved that video at the time i tried to re-watch it after having made this one and it is very difficult for me to watch just because it's it's just so much technically inferior to this one just on a technical level um, I, I do like, it, it's another punchline video, so I, I do like the punchline to it, but yeah. uh, I, I like, uh, you can see the progress, like very, very distinctly watching those two back, these two back to back. Um, I like where we're going with it, and the, the future is only up from here. Yeah, we had a great time shooting it. Um... Very, we, we learned a lot. Yeah. We learned a lot shooting this. Um, the, there are some scenes that we were filming at the beginning that took like an hour or two to light. Yeah, we just had to like set up the camera, set up the, the lights and everything like and, that. And oh. I think by the end of it, we were, we were flying. We, were, we, we had learned so much on just setting up our shots. And also, we we've gotten more equipment and we've gotten more familiarized with our current location so we know uh, uh, where to light and what to darken i feel and for the foreseeable future we'll be filming here <laughs> 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 or the foreseeable near future yeah um but yeah that is our director's commentary um or creator's commentary i would say yeah yeah Thank you for listening. But yeah, more to come. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next one uh, coming very soon. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody.